Hey y'all, welcome back to GSC. You know what's sitting behind me, it's Casper. So, somebody asked about why the S300 over NHX35. Quite frankly, that's a really good question. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and point at the truck, that way I can talk and point and do show and tell as we go. So let me get this turned around and we'll talk about this S300 and why I'm running this over an HX and you guys can decide what you want to do after that. So we're going to talk about the whole S300 thing. Casper's got a nice little fixture right now because I'm letting my parent borrow him to be a farm truck slash haul scrap, get things cleaned up around the barnyard. Been a crazy year and a half since dad had both hips replaced, so got to clean up. Anyways, why did I go from an intercooled HX35 Super 54, same, same, to a non-intercooled S300 in Casper? That's a really good question. Quite a few people have asked recently why I did the swap. Part of it was the curiosity factor. I got the turbo from my friend Hugh Jeffries out on the East Coast, and he was like, you got to give it a go. So I tried it with a, a smaller exhaust housing. It had a .82 open housing on it with a Marmon flange, and frankly, it ran great on the DB2 truck, but it ran miserably on Casper. So we kept the 6068 center section and front cover and went to a .88 AR open scroll housing on the rear, remade the downpipe adapter, same T4 adapter on this turbo as what we had on Hughes' original setup. And it it really did some wonderful things. So the Super 54 HX35 with the intercooler, I was peaking around 17 pounds of boost. My air intake temps during the summertime, call it 75, 80 degrees outside. We're still getting around 280 to, I guess, I peaked at 286 racing at UCC, um, so it was still pretty hot, but the thing is, is that my drive pressure was, if I was making 17 pounds of boost, I was seeing around 21, 21 pounds of drive pressure, so she was working a little harder, and for all intents and purposes, the intake temps were lower, but they weren't as low as I wanted them to be, so a friend of mine, Josh Hasenzal, has a big red 94 that is absolutely stunning, and we had my WH1C on Casper that is now on Pat Hanker's plow truck. And he needed a charger. So we went ahead and we played the Swaparoo game, put the Super 54 on his truck. And with his tuning and everything else, it runs flawlessly. And it does everything he's ever wanted to do with 342 gears. And I went to this big honking monstrosity of an S300. It has a billet compressor wheel in it. And as of right now, my peak EGTs are right around 1,000 to 1,100 degrees max, and that's really beating on it. Um, the Super 54 with an intercooler on it, I peaked around 1,100 to 1,250 when I was towing. So this is a little bit lower. Um, my drive pressure in this, if I'm making 25 pounds of boost, I'm only making about 20 to 22 pounds of, of drive, so it's... A little more balanced in the opposite direction which is better for the exhaust side of this engine um, air intake temps are peaking right around 305 right now so obviously with the billet compressor wheel and everything else on this it does it gets hot i haven't checked it in 80 plus degree weather yet but it's between 150 to 170 degrees over ambient typically so it is warm. I'm not a huge fan. The intercooler worked great on the Super 54 in the winter months. And it would keep it right about 20 to 25 degrees above ambient. As soon as summer hit though, and things got humid and things got sticky, I was seeing between 150, 160 degrees above ambient. So I didn't gain a whole lot doing that. Going back to this setup, I, I do see similar temps but i also see much lower drive pressure i see 7 to 12 degree cooler coolant temps when i'm really beating on it um overall my my boost when i'm driving this thing at 60 mile an hour is one to two pounds you lean into it and 
it'll percolate up to 10, 12 pounds and, and pull a hill. Whereas the Super 54, I was running between seven and 10 pounds doing 60. So you can see where the intercooler is beneficial on that because you're constantly spinning and it's made more heat. Whereas this is kind of, I don't want to call it lazy, but it's uh, definitely not as excited as the whole sets get. So personally, I'm really becoming a fan of the S300 on this. I'm going to put it to the test when I sled pull it at the end of the month. And then I'll do a an apples to apples comparison. We'll see how many feet I can go with this because I did sled pull with a, a Super 60 slash HX, HX40 at KOS 2020. And hopefully I can get a, a pretty decent side by side comparison. I'm going to weight the truck the same, same size rear tires. I'm going to load it up the same. I'm going to try to launch it as similarly as possible because I've got enough practice at it with this. So we'll see how it goes. But personally, at this point, I'd really love to intercool the the Borg and see what that nets me for air intake temps. And quite honestly, I, I think that going forward, this will be the direction I take. So more on Borg Warners coming soon. All right, so there's your brief overview of the S300. Mind you, the temps that I mentioned in there are averages. That was what I saw above ambient in Michigan climate. When I raced down at UCC, the track temp was over 112 degrees that day. So that 286 peak was pretty steaming demon. Um, 305 is when you're really beating the living daylights out of one. So that said, those are all peak temps, averages. Um, I'll have to work on getting a graph put together at some point here when I have time to actually sit down and data log this. But hopefully this gives you guys a little bit of an idea of why I'm going with the 300 and you guys can make your decisions based on that. Thanks all.